So we walked. We went down there. And, the, and I had no idea when I first went what I'd be doing, how long I'd be staying or anything. But it, when I got to language school, the first thing God started dealing with me about is, how long are you going to stay? And everything He showed me was, you don't see any great prophet of the Bible. You don't see anybody that wrote much of anything that did it for a year or two or three. They were lifers. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we, we want this, this uh, assassin, this, uh, this specialist type of, uh, you know, like a, a surgeon, you know, just got... We, we want to come in and do our own little sweet job and be grandly rewarded for it, but it isn't like that. Why am I saying this? I'm telling you. This morning I could feel the, the anxiety, the, uh, the animosity, if you will, of some people against this man because they think he's bragging. They think he's uh, rubbing their nose in it or, or, or flaunting something that God gave. He's not. He's just telling you the facts because I was sitting where you are. I've done what you do. I know what you're like. I mean, I just can look at you. I know what you like, okay? Because I was just like you. But God's got a call for everyone in here. He's got a job for us to do. And you need to turn loose of the junk that's holding you back and put your hand to the plow and quit looking back, quit worrying about yourself. I got down there. I get on into this. That, uh, like I said, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, apparently, God has chosen me to, to be a uh, troubleshooter because everything this guy sends me to is some. <laughs> some days you wonder if you want to go over there or not, you know. <laughs> And I seem to be inheriting more and more territory like that. <laughs> but uh, that's fine. I like it. I love it. I go every chance. I go I go when there's it's somebody else's area and there's a problem. I want to go see how they fix it, you know. But uh, it, it's a blessing to me. The Bible says that if you can't be faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? We all want to go out and take the kingdom and grab the land for ourselves. But the way God set it up was we come in under somebody else and work and learn and, and then you move out. And I've been, ever since I got there, I mean, I mean, as soon as I got to Mexico, I began feeling drawn to certain areas. And there weren't places where we had works and there wasn't, I wasn't given a direct word, didn't feel any need to go, leaving where I was to go up there. So I just kept plugging away where I am. And after about four years now, God has just opened the doors and we've grown up into these areas. My little girl brought me a map the other day that I'd, I'd drawn out. It, well, it's a, it a copy of a map I sketched out of several years ago, an area that I wanted to work. And I didn't tell anybody about it, didn't show it to anybody. I just put it down there and forgot about it. Susanna comes running in there the other day, hands it to me. In the corner of it, touched this place called Chapulhuacan. Last summer... Some guys got in touch with us, invited us over there, and it is this massive valley. Awesome. I've not seen anything in North America like it. This thing is huge. And they just opened the door. Five churches wanted to come in and open the door, and it's this huge corridor. And there's nobody back there. No churches. <laughs> Man, you just go through there throwing out tracks all day and talking to people, and you never hit, a, hit the same one twice. Up the other way... This place called Planchinol, I saw it and fell in love with it. It's cold up there. <laughs> None of the other guys seem to like it like I do. They, uh, one of them calls me Sub-Zero. <laughs> we go up the, uh, the mountain there. I'll, I'll have a tendency when it starts getting cold, I'll take my jacket off and ride around a short sleeve shirt on my motorcycle. But I just begin to feel drawn up there. And I'm telling you, this area is hard. There it is. They're so hard against the gospel, it's unreal. <clears throat> you know what? The, after I've been there, I wasn't, wasn't down there six months. Went and prayed for this guy. Went back and prayed for him. Went back and prayed for him. He said, we didn't just get hurt. Our feelings hurt. Lay hands on him. Oh, God, I didn't do anything. Went back again. And went back again. I don't have to do anything. All i got to do is go put my hand on that guy. Holy Ghost. And you know what? This guy's been on his back for two years. From a snake bite. They're fixing to cut his hand off. And one day, the brother, the brother in that area goes back up. 
Hey, where's this kid? Gone to school. Healed. Still got his hand. You can do it too. <laughs> Just spent a couple of days walking with this brother. He was kind of quiet. He was only deaf for 20, what, 22, 25 years. The back of his head is swollen up. They said you could, it looked like he had two oranges stuck on the back of his neck. Swole up so bad, finally the pus, the, the pressure just split his skin. Pus oozed out of it. Just come to a couple meetings, God healed him. Now he's out there trying to do the same for everybody else. That's right, that's God. Hey, I'm with you. Go for it, buddy. There's some, there's some brothers down there I work with in this area uh, called Chicha Ishpan. Yeah, oh boy. There's a, a little army back out here in the woods that not too many people know about. Yeah. And I mean, they've really got the crunch on us. I mean, it's, it's uh, sneak in the back and move around quietly. And then I was really getting upset. I was getting torqued because, man, God, I want to get in this thing. This is, this is the place. You know, it's a good pocket back here. Nobody's in it. See, what happens down there is when you're on the pavement, I can take you to town on the pavement. There's five churches. You drive about a mile on the gravel, there's two. You take the gravel road, go another three hours, there's nothing. No gospel. But now these people are coming out of the woods, witch doctors. Come out. They want to get saved. That's right. One family, this blessed me so much. One family, the grandfather, his son, his grandson, and the wives of the two older ones all got saved the same day. All got born again. The little boy is 12 years old. His daddy has given 30 pigs to the witch doctors to heal his kid. That's a couple of your cars. The day he gets born again, it's over with. He's healed. <laughs> Hadn't been back. And like, like somebody was saying, when, when, when it comes time for worship, man, this guy just explodes in tears. He starts worshiping God and five guys on either side of him hit the ground. They can't stand to be around him. And what I want to tell you to do is don't get mad and leave if you want to. But you can do and have the exact same thing right here. I dare you to try it. <clears throat> oh, well. It's not my fault. No problem. Okay, we need to turn to Isaiah. Things banging. You don't hear it popping or something? Or just me hearing it? Just me, yeah? Jeez. All right. Used to. You see how these... My son's 24. How old are you, Jay? You 30 yet? 32. I mean, these guys are young compared to lots of other people, but there's what what we what we got here is the work is what makes us the way we are. It's not a teaching that I I don't sit down with the men I work with and teach them this is how I want you to be. I tell them get in the truck, let's go out in the woods. The woods tell them how they're going to be. The mountain talks to them and teaches them. It ain't got to do with me. It's got to do with the mountain. It's the mountain that talks. All I do is when you come down and visit, sit you down and talk miracles till you get tired of hearing them or till I get tired of talking, then I let go, go away. But it's the mountain that does the talking for me. <laughs>